Hi everyone, my name is Arjun Karanam and I'm a rising junior at Stanford University, majoring in CS and minoring in either poli-sci history or creative writing. That part's still up in the air. And this year, I am a member of the Congressional App Challenge Alumni Advisory Board. Hello everyone, my name is Trent Gilbert. I'm an incoming freshman at Morehouse College, pursuing a dual degree computer science and computer engineering major at Georgia Tech. I'm from way outside Philadelphia in an area called Lower Mary, and outside the classroom, I love to bike, swim, and drone photography. And I am this year's student outreach chair for the Congressional App Challenge. Hi everyone, I'm Albert Howe. I'm an incoming freshman at Columbia University in New York. I grew up in the California Bay Area, and I'm a member of the Congressional App Challenge Alumni Advisory Board. I'm the founder and CEO of OnTrack, which is a productivity startup that helps students work online by blocking distractions. Hello everyone, my name is Abbas Hersey. I'm from Tukwila, Washington, and I plan on studying computer science at the University of Washington in Seattle. Hi, my name is Ryan Garcia. I'm a student at Universidad Politécnica de Puerto Rico. I've been programming since 14 years old. Hi. My name is Meeta Gupta, and I'm a freshman at NYU, and I'm on the Congressional App Challenge Alumni Advisory Board. Hello, my name is Aaron Bird. I'm from Columbia, South Carolina, and I will be attending the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill this fall as a freshman, where I plan to major in computer science and psychology. Hi everyone, my name is Simena Castillo, and I was a part of a team that won the Congressional App Challenge last year under Illinois District 11. Hello, my name is Charlie, and I'm a member of the Congressional App Challenge Alumni Advisory Board. My name is Samuel Mizuandino. I'm a student at Columbia University in New York City. I participated in the challenge in 2018, and I'm really excited to work with you guys this year. I decided to submit an application to the Congressional App Challenge because I was excited about my coding project. The App Challenge seemed like a great way to showcase my project and get together with other friends to code. Also, the App Challenge sounded really interesting. It's a congressional program for coding for thousands of young coders across the nation. How cool is that? Um, what motivated me to participate in the Congressional App Challenge was that I created a really interesting app that not only could serve Puerto Rico but also the whole nation and I wanted to show um, what I had done at a level greater than just Puerto Rico and in the Congressional App Challenge let me um, reach more people with my app. Yeah so when I applied to the Congressional App Challenge in 2018 I definitely didn't have you know a very specific plan I wasn't like you know I'm gonna meet this congressperson I'm gonna network with this you know this office and I don't think it was it wasn't it wasn't that uh, clearly defined but what I did want was you know and I think it's what a lot of high school students want is I wanted some affirmation you know is there a place in tech for someone like me you know can I succeed in this industry and I think that you know the challenge definitely provided that and, and even if we hadn't won I think just the, the support network and the, the experience of building an app and prototyping and working with a team of other students was really valuable and it made me a lot more confident in myself. I originally submitted an app to the challenge back in 2018 because I wanted to learn more about app development while also being able to connect with students who share the same interests as I did. Now, my reason for submitting an app to CSC was because I felt my app could be useful in my own community. Um, the app I submitted focused in targeted students and helped them stay on task despite constant distractions from their phone, while rewarding them for doing so. Um, it was a simple app with a lot of room to grow, but I took a chance to try to make an impact on a problem that affected my community. So I participated in the very first CAC actually, way back in 2015-2016, and my app was called Electoral College History, not really creative naming. And the reason why I created that, as is pretty obvious by the year, we were in the midst of the 2016 election, um, and this was the first time that a lot of my friends and I were getting engaged in the political process. Coupled that with the fact that I was taking a push at the time, and I wanted to have an easy way to look through the political history of the US and make interactive prediction maps that I could share with my friends. A technical resource that I particularly enjoy, besides Stack Overflow, of course, which is godly for all technical people, is probably geeksforgeeks.org because they literally break down every single algorithm imaginable in the most simple format ever. And I just find it incredibly useful. 
Uh, my favorite coding resource would probably be Hack the Box. Personally, I really got into cybersecurity over the last few years, and it was an, an opportunity to test what I had learned. Um, it's not for beginners, and the challenges can be quite difficult, um, but it's an intriguing way to grow your skills in pen testing and other ways. Um, I would recommend it for anyone interested in cybersecurity or looking for a way to grow their problem solving skills. My favorite free coding resource and any learning resource would be YouTube since it's a platform where all is free and most of the resources are really easy, easy to search and in coding you can see a lot of tutorials and basic that are over there and you don't have to have any knowledge. You can go from a beginner to expert just watching YouTubes and doing the tutorials. Um, one coding resource that I recommend and really like is GitHub because it allows you to share your code and projects with a much bigger audience and you can also learn by looking at other people's code and projects. And some resources, if you're doing web, de web development, I recommend to everyone Free Code Camp. Um, it's where I started and it's where I still uh, go back for title references. I can't really narrow down my dream tech job into one specific field. Among others, I enjoy doing analysis with programming, like AI or natural language processing. But this can be applied to historical studies, biotechnical research, or any number of things. I want to discover new things that can help society and inspire and motivate students to pursue a future in STEM. My dream tech job would be to work as a software engineer at Apple. The senior vice president of software engineering at Apple actually shares a birthday with me. But yeah, my first Apple product was a fourth generation iPod Touch that I received for my ninth birthday. And I was just so excited and fascinated by the fact that you're capable of doing so many things on that tiny 3.5 inch screen. So working at Apple would allow me to be a part of a team that creates products that have the potential to bring that same joy that I experienced to millions of customers all over the world dream tech job. This part's a little weird. I definitely want to keep working in tech, but I also want to have that ability to create my own thing. Um, and so my dream tech job is probably to create my own startup at some point in either the fields of AR slash VR or education, or maybe even combining those two. That would be really cool. In terms of what my, my, what my dream job is, um, I'm not entirely sure if I want to go into industry or academia yet. Um, if I want to go into academia, then uh, I definitely want to study, uh, I want to do research and study the interdisciplinary applications of machine learning and artificial intelligence. And if I decide to go into industry, then I would like to become a machine learning engineer. My dream technical job is probably working at a general management company as a technical consultant. And I know that's a little unorthodox, but I really enjoy the prospect of doing that because I'll be able to work with people, work with companies, and also use my technical skills as an asset. It won't just be me staring at a computer screen all day. It'll be me understanding other people's problems and trying to help them using the skills that I have. And that's something I'm really excited about. My advice for current CAC challengers would be to not be afraid to make mistakes. Everyone can get frustrated once in a while when running into an error that seems impossible to debug. But it is good to view these mistakes as a learning experience that will make you into an even better coder. And you should be proud of all the great progress that you have made along the way. It's all offer to students who are participating in the Congressional App Challenge is to remember that above all else, it's a learning experience. And so as long as you do your best and as long as you produce something, it wasn't a waste of time even if you didn't win anything because the experiences and, the, and what you learned from that very experience, you can carry that over with the next application that you build. And so regardless of what the results are, you'll have gained something as long as you put in your all and to produce something as best as you can with the current skill level and with the resources that you have. And my advice to any current Congressional App Challenge participants would be to find a problem that's affecting either you or your community and then brainstorm ideas on how to fix that problem with technology. As for advice for our current CSE challengers, take a shot. Put a team together, brainstorm some ideas that could be useful for your lives and just see what you could do. You'll be surprised by how much you can do when you set your mind to it or how much you can learn when you strive to improve each day. I mean, tech is the future. I'd love to see some amazing apps next year. Best of luck. And one piece of advice I have for all current Congressional App Challengers 
is to be creative, trust yourself, and don't be afraid to ask for help. If you give a one piece of advice to students who are participating in the challenge this year, or you know, thinking of applying, what I would definitely say is to work on a team and to really kind of go outside of your comfort zone. So personally, you know, for me, when I when I applied in 2018, I had made a lot of apps before, I'd made a lot of websites, but I had never worked on a team. I'd certainly never worked on a team of four people who I didn't really know. And that, I have to say it was a really good experience. I learned the importance of uh, diversity and perspectives when you're trying to come up with an idea. You know, maybe you think something's good, but someone else has a you know a life experience where they, they think, you know, maybe we should do this a little bit differently. You can have really interesting conversations and ultimately you get a much better product. So I would definitely say, you know, if you're on the fence, you're not sure if you want to participate, Form a team, form a team of people you don't even know, and see what you can create. It's going to be a really good experience. Hope that helped, and uh, good luck this year.